Hello, I'm JW, and this time we're going to have a look at the drill, which is now substantially completed. It's just one component which needs to be replaced, which we'll look at a bit later on. And it's all going to put back together. It does work, and that starter and the other parts we've seen on the other video are now all assembled on it. So let's have a look. So here is the completed drill. Now see all the parts are put back together. And on the side here, just got the black painted cover where the new spring was put in. And got this holder here, it's just put on for the chuck key to go in. And the previous uh, first episode, it showed you some bit of old twisted wire there, which was pretty poor. And the starter here on the side, so all put together, so the start and stop buttons. And also new uh, flex has been fitted underneath here, so this is from the actual power supply. And then we've just got that one there, which goes over to the motor at the back. And I've replaced the uh, screws here for the motor mounting because the old ones were all different sizes and there was only three of them anyway, so clearly they were missing. And also the ones on the top there. And of course we have a new belt as well because the other one was completely destroyed, literally falling apart. And uh, pretty much everything else is uh, as was supplied with it. So all the bits here put back together, the quill lock here. And uh, this bit here, if I have a look there, this has actually been repaired by somebody at some point in the past and what's happened here is this is the piece that just clamps there to hold the depth uh, stop there and it's obviously broken at some point so someone has uh, cut this piece basically attached it back onto there and then they've put this uh, threaded piece which goes through basically just to uh, clamp it up there it's a bit ugly looking but uh, it does actually do the job so basically we've kept that as before and the handle there is just plain uh, steel there some of these apparently did have knobs on the end, but this is not one of those, it would seem. Table, of course, which has been filled in, as we saw in the other episode, so it is at least now flat. And I say that's just a fairly common situation there. And of course, the base underneath is uh, intact anyway, because nobody drilled down that far. On the side here, I've left the original sewer number plate in position. It uh, did have, of course, red paint on it originally, so you would have residue of that there. But uh, say it's the original number on the side there, and also the badge on the front. Uh, again, this is just as uh, supplied. You can still read the Talco name across there, but again, most of the paint has disappeared on that. But uh, again, we'll just leave that pretty much as it was. And uh, the rest of it again, pretty much okay. This bolt in the centre here has been replaced because the other one was damaged on the end where the threads went. So let's put a new one in there. That's actually a metric 12 millimetre. The original was a half inch, 12 millimetres is close enough. You can buy half inch ones, but uh, being in the UK, they're quite more difficult to find. And of course, they're also more expensive. Metric ones are just easy to find and very cheaply available pretty much anywhere. And the column and things has cleaned up okay. I say again, it's not perfect, but it's uh, reasonably uh, flat and corrosion free. And again, the levers and things have also cleaned up decently well. So. Again, they're not perfect, but they're 75 years old, so what did you actually expect? And the spring from China did fit in there okay, so no problems with that. Now in terms of the middle here, it all operates uh, pretty much as you would expect, so no problem there. These are just the things to set the depth, so you can obviously stop it at a particular point there. So it's just basically one for that and one to lock it on the top. A little uh, pointer there, which again does still... Uh, actually work, so you just position that to get some kind of idea of depth. Quill lock here, that's sort of loose at the moment, so it can move, but if you clamp it up there, then it will just hold in whatever position you would want. The instructions for this thing suggested you could basically lock it in position and then have a cutter put in and then just sort of do some kind of routing on the base there. That would definitely not be recommended, but nevertheless, uh, that's what it said on the instructions. Handle here does adjust a bit, you can uh, just move it through there. Just by again tightening or loosening the knob on the end here. So uh, let's just turn it on and see uh, how this thing actually does work. Uh, we'll just use the buttons on the starter here. So that's in the uh, running state, and of course we can lower and obviously raise the quill as required. So although it's uh, moderately noisy, of course it's a lot better than uh, when we had originally. All the parts seem to move smoothly, and of course the new belt has helped immensely without any of those great lumps and cuts which were present in the other one. Now one part you're going to notice missing is the chuck, 
which fits on this uh, taper here. And I've taken the chuck off because it appears that the chuck is actually damaged or has been uh, busted in some fashion. Because uh, although this all appears to work perfectly smoothly and there's no obvious uh, sort of horrible vibration or anything, when you put a drill bit in the chuck and then tighten it up, it wobbles significantly. And as far as I can tell, this is actually due to the chuck itself. It's not the fact that the uh, spindle or the taper or whatever has been damaged. And we'll have a look at the chuck on the bench in a moment. But uh, suffice to say, I'm going to get a different chuck and we'll uh, try that on there. Because, bearing in mind, the original one is 75 years old, as is the rest of this machine. So uh, it appears to have been having a rather hard life. And clearly it's uh, not operating as it should be. So I'll get a new chuck and hopefully that will... Uh, hold the drill bits more satisfactorily and it won't wobble all over the place. So the drill essentially is complete and all works uh, pretty much as you would expect. The motor is considerably quieter now, it's also been dismantled, cleaned and some oil put inside. That odd whine which uh, you've seen in a couple of the other videos does sort of come and go occasionally. I think that's just due to the fact that it's a certain age and there's obviously a certain amount of wear inside but nothing we can really do about that. But bear in mind, this is not a drill going to run for hours and hours continuously. It's designed for fairly intermittent use anyway, so yeah, not shouldn't be a particular problem. The starter there works fine, and so we saw that in the other video, but uh, not really much to go wrong other than the coil burning out. So now we're going to have a look at the chuck, and I'll show you what the problem is with it. And I say it appears to be the chuck itself rather than the mounting, and it may just be that someone's uh, hammered on it or broken it in some way. Now here is the chuck. And as we saw in the uh, original video, this is actually a Jacob's chuck. It's a uh, 0 half inch and it's a 33 taper. And that refers to the hole in the top here, which matches up with that tapered piece on the spindle. So basically they just shove together and uh, friction holds them together. Now if you look at the top of this, you'll see it's uh, had a fair amount of damage on the top here, where someone has done who knows what with it. Goodness knows why it's got all these disgusting uh, gouge marks and destruction. And if we look from the side, Again, you'll see there's a huge flat on this side where that uh, huge divot has been created as well as the various other bits and pieces so it's definitely been uh, fairly well mistreated at some point. Now the chuck looks visually okay apart from that damage on the top. I mean the side is okay and it still rotates uh, perfectly freely as you'd expect so no real problem there. But uh, the problem occurs when you put a drill bit in and I've got one here this is just a random generic item but uh, this has never been used, so the actual shank here is perfectly smooth. There's no burrs or anything from it being used and uh, slipping or whatever. So if we put this into the chuck here, and I say the jaws open and close uh, as you would expect. So just uh, line that up in there. Now if I do that up uh, reasonably hand tight, you would expect that this is now gripping this securely, and obviously then tight with a key of course to uh, secure it fully. But the problem is that even though I've tightened that reasonably tightly, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a significant amount of movement within the drill bit itself. So let's just try that again. I'll put it close to the microphone so you can hopefully hear that. So again, I'll just put it in, get it centered. That's now gripping, and if I place that near the microphone and move it, See it's flapping all over the place, it's just not gripping at all. And if you tighten this down really as much as possible by hand, it's certainly more secure. But again, I'll put it in near the microphone and move it. And there's a significant amount of movement there. And of course, this is not what's supposed to happen at all. Now, I've got another chuck here. This is a completely unrelated one, this is an SDS uh, conversion deal. And again, this was only some cheap item. I don't know who makes this particular one. It uh, doesn't even have a make on it, so uh, whatever. But this is uh, a very similar th three-jaw chuck. And if I take the same drill bit and place it into this one, and again, we'll just tighten it up. Now, that is literally finger tight, and yet that the drill bit now is completely securely held there and there's no movement whatsoever. And again, if I tighten this up a bit by force there, that is now rock solid in there with no movement whatsoever. And bear in mind, this is just some cheapo generic thing. And this has also been knocking around in a toolbox with a heavy duty industrial drill for a couple of years. So this has definitely not been treated particularly well. And yet even this is vastly superior to this 
even though, say, this is uh, some cheap, probably Chinese thing of unknown manufacture. So clearly this is completely bust. And the other thing to look at on this as well, if we uh, just zoom in, is the way that the jaws actually close together. So here's a look at the uh, chuck in closer detail. And if I rotate the chuck there so we can close up the jaws, you see they pretty much close as you would expect. And they basically come together like that. So that's just on the point of close there. So if we now turn the thing around and we have a look at the next one, again you see that's fine, that's basically there's no uh, gap there as you would expect. And then if we come onto this one, I mean look at that gap there, you can even drive a bus through there. So clearly there's something majorly wrong here because clearly if they're all going to be closing they should all close at the same time. That has a massive gap there, whereas this of course has uh, no gap at all and likewise no gap at all over there. So obviously there's some kind of mechanical uh, issue with this. And yeah, if you uh, keep cranking down on the thing, then this does close up a bit. But even though I've cranked that down pretty much as tight as I can do it with my fingers, again, you'll see there's still a gap on the jaw here, where of course the others are close together as you would expect. And it's not just the fact that there's a couple of sort of chips and things at the end. I mean, it's literally the entire spacing there along the whole length of the jaw is somehow out of alignment. Now here's the cheapo matic chuck, so I'm going to just compare with this one. So again, opening and closing. So if we just come in so that those are basically just closing together. Bear in mind this is still quite loose at this stage. So we're closed obviously on that side. Pretty much closed there and closed there. So uh, that's already contacting together and I say bear in mind this is actually still fairly loose. You can go a bit further and then if we just tighten that down with a certain amount of force and then we can see that again there's no gap on any of the three sides. And this is certainly by no means perfect because if you look at the end there, there's actually some uh, misalignment there between the two end bits. But this was a cheapo thing, it only cost about £10 I believe in the, a couple of years ago and so it's been knocking around in toolbox ever since. So uh, even this is hugely better than this uh, supposedly high quality item. So I'll buy another chuck with the uh, correct taper obviously to fit on the spindle and uh, see how that goes but uh, clearly it's going to be better than this thing because say this uh, you can move the drill bits in there even when it's tightened down quite a bit and if you graunch down on it with the uh, key as much as possible the drill bit then is secure but I think what's happening is as you tighten it's sort of moving off at an angle or something of course hence why there's got the horrendous amount of wobble involved so I'll get another one it won't be a horribly expensive one because bearing in mind that even this at £10 or whatever it was a couple of years ago is still even now better than this uh, clearly damaged item. So uh, I'll get one of those and uh, see what that's like. But until then, thanks for watching.